Hey everyone, welcome to an over beer movie review. My name is Rich. I'm Nick. And today we're talking about Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad. Um, so we've both seen it. Did I? I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I saw it. We shouldn't be doing this if you haven't seen it. Yeah. I read reviews. That's all you need to do now, right? You can just judge a movie exactly. on the reviews. Um, so in typical um, over beer review fashion, we'll start off very non-spoiler. Um, just kind of give our basic thoughts, and then we'll be very clear once we dive into the spoiler portion of the review. Mm-hmm. So why don't you kick us off, Nick? What you... All right, so... Well, I think that it, it's it's a good way to start by letting... By just talking about... we Neither of us liked BVS. Correct. Neither of us really liked Man of Steel. Correct. Um, and then this movie, we were both excited for. This was my hope. Yes, this because the good. trailers have been very good since the very first one over a year ago at Mm -hmm. comic-con um and then the reviews came out and the reviews are just were just as bad as bvs honestly actually a worse rotten tomato percentage than bvs oh was it it's like 27 and 26 oh okay oh oh. (laughs) yeah so uh my my excitement really started to wane um and i i walked out of bvs knowing i i did not like the movie Mm -hmm. um just flat out just going as we were watching it just thinking all right this movie yeah i mean this movie's a mess we recorded our thoughts i think pretty much right after right like like, yeah like it's it's not good there's these things we like about there's these things we didn't um and so i agree with the reception to that but suicide squad i really liked it wow i really liked this movie is it a movie that has flaws yes we're going to talk about the flaws Mm -hmm. of this movie is their character issues yes some of them um is it the best made movie no but i had a lot of fun watching it and i think that the best thing that i can say about this movie without even talking about spoilers for me is this is the first of these dc this new dc cinematic cinematic universe that left me actually wanting to see more of the dc cinematic universe okay specifically more of this i don't know if it left me wanting to in any way excited about justice league or optimism about justice league specifically but it left me wanting more of suicide squad if wanting more of a better version of it like mm-hmm. i hope the sequel improves on the issues and builds on what worked for me but i did like it i did like it okay. and we'll talk more in spoilers sure um i think it's fine mm-hmm. i don't particularly like it but i don't hate it i don't necessarily dislike it um but there's things about it that i really enjoyed but it's just such a sloppy mess of a movie that's it's hard for me to to give it points like give it enough points to be like yeah i like to say i liked this movie um like it just exists like i went out going like okay like it's fine i liked these things didn't like all these things and meh see yeah i think that i'm more high on it than you for me specifically there's some editing issues a lot of yes but there's specifically one choice of i guess cutting stuff out or Mm -hmm. just writing poorly about maybe a quarter of the way through the movie or more you probably know what i'm talking about. maybe even we'll talk about it in spoilers okay. but everything before that point and everything once you get past like why did you do it this way is i really like so like if they just fixed that for me this movie would have been really effective other than that i don't really find it all that incoherent i don't really find it to be all that much of a mess besides some of those editing choices for me the way I I looked at you know there were these rumors before <clears throat> excuse me this movie came out about there being two different cuts yeah about you know air having his cut and then test audiences wanting different things and then screwing with it it feels like that like there's certain things that are added and taken away and the the use of music I don't think is very effective in this like it's it feels like it's, it's very much trying to be Guardians of the Galaxy and it just isn't. Some... No, it's not. I agree with you. There is a lot of... There is a clear trying to capture the awesome mix volume one. Mm-hmm. To, but for the most part, I enjoyed the music in the movie. For the most part, I felt like it was really... There's one scene involving Harley in an elevator that felt like something that was tacked on. Oh, okay. Because 
I mean, it really. I would bet you that's one of the scenes that they re, that they went back mm. and reshot because she fights some things in that scene that are not in the rest of that entire building until later. Like it, okay. it really felt like a very odd. I I would be surprised if that was added in that scene. Like there's you know there's some fun music in that scene and it mm-hmm. really felt like it's trying to add a little bit more fun. I mean, they went back and reshot some some action. Yeah. So I, I my guess is it was that. Mm. Um, I don't know. I, it just it didn't. Overall, I thought the story was was fine enough, but it is funny that you know Zack Snyder, I think specifically, had made all these comments about how the DC universe was different than the Marvel movies and how they didn't they weren't just doing what they did. They were telling deeper stories and stuff like that. And I think he specifically said our movies aren't going to end with blue lights in the sky. He said that at one point, and this movie does. You know, like, but I think that they're wise to kind of start trying to do what Marvel does. I'd rather see DC making movies like Marvel than DC making Mm -hmm. movies like Batman v Superman. You want to jump into spoilers? Yeah. So so overall, so overall, you're overall. I'm saying, I just I I enjoy. I had a good time with it. I think it's fine. Um, I'm seeing it again tomorrow with my girlfriend because she wanted to see it. I'm not dreading it, but I'm not excited either. I'm just kind of like, okay, I'll, here we go again. Like, it wasn't, it's fine. Um, I was talking to some people at work yesterday, and they were like, so a matinee? I'm like, sure. That's kind of how I feel about it. I like, I don't. So let's, so let's do spoilers. I liked it. So spoilers. So the gloves are up. Spoilers from here on out. Where do you want to start? All right, why don't we talk about what we didn't like okay and then we'll talk about what did work okay um so for me okay the main thing that really bothered me with this movie is well there's there's a couple i didn't like i like the idea of of waller i liked how they were putting the team together and showing all the team and showing that i didn't like how they didn't even bother showing some characters though Mm -hmm. like to not show slipknot at all until he basically dies. He, he's a, it makes it he's completely. He's... It makes it completely ineffective that he dies. Yeah. Why not just give him an opening, try and give him a couple cool lines at the beginning, and then kill him so that you at least yeah. kind of, like it doesn't even seem like there was an attempt made at that. Mm. Same with Katana just showing up. She, she has no. Neither of them have any purpose in this film whatsoever. And part of, and there's other characters too. Mm-hmm. Killer Croc almost does nothing. He's a waste. The. Um, I kind of actually liked. I I enjoyed. I was very surprised. I enjoyed Jai Kurt. Courtney yeah, I think he's. Boomerang. I think he's good, he but do I, he doesn't do anything. Like he has good moments, but his character again is is wasted. And that's kind of the thing. Like you would never see that. You don't see that in Guardians of the Galaxy mm-hmm. or the Marvel movies, where there are wait or the Star Trek movies. Star Trek Beyond, and we saw a couple weeks ago. Yeah, there's something for every character in that movie to do, mm-hmm. and they did a terrible job of doing that in this movie. Yeah, because half the team. People will walk out of it and not know their names. Mm-hmm. Um, but my biggest issue was some of those early decisions with not developing them. But but once the team is kind of set, all of a sudden, the action just yeah, starts. Yeah, that's, that's a huge problem. It's just like thrown all of a sudden you're into it. And part of it is because I guess they wanted to keep that like big reveal that Waller was the one in the tower, and if you had known that they were already there for that, then you would have known that. But it's not a big enough thing. No. In fact, it was it was underwhelming because I figured I was kind of debating who was going to be up there. I thought it might be Lex. Oh, really? But I wasn't like they also don't do a good enough job reminding you that they're trying to just save that one person. I, I totally I thought the entire time they were just going to to the clean enchantress the to clean to deal with enchantress. Up until they show that tower again, I was well, like they say it like two separate times. I totally going missed. To pre- she says like you're going to protect H one V one and Will Smith goes for all, for all of us who don't speak hero. What is that? And she goes the one person you can't the one person you have to save in the city. You're trying to save this person. Yeah. The one person you can't kill in the city. And then when they get to the the city to Midway City, um, Rick Flag again says says our our goal is to get to that building. Well, yeah. And then they show the building. And I was like, and oh, okay. The I guess they're because they go from <laughs> the scene in the sewer where she with the bomb or where they're in the sewer with flag and, and right. enchantress yeah. and, oh, and the and then he calls her and he's like oh she, you know she I think bolted they're in like a 
a, and then a like train train thing. yeah and yeah. the subway and then it's like seconds later they're assembling the team it and i was, was like very odd i was like how did flag get all the way from there to there and and then he's like well three days ago and it's like what yeah. what are you talking about three days ago yeah so that's all very messy and is there st- did they do it that way just for the reveal or did they do it that way for pacing issues the movie's already two hours Apparently, it there's a ton happened. of stuff cut with the Joker, apparently. Yeah, well, that... And that stuff, I have no idea. When you read about what some of those scenes are, how the fuck does it even fit into the movie, right? No. Like, yeah, there's apparently an action <clears throat> scene between the Joker and the Suicide Squad, and the Joker, like, hits Harley Quinn in it. And, like, how does that even play with what happens in the rest of the movie? Well, that's... Like, I don't understand. And that's leads a little into what I'm curious about with the other supposed other cut of this movie is i think this movie could have easily been two and a half hours to three hours whereas like bvs is like we're gonna give you an extra half hour and i thought it should have been shorter this i felt like it could have been longer to really give these characters the time that they need because the joker scenes in this don't already don't feel like they fit with the movie like they already feel out of place oh yeah well see i think it's a tough thing because i think that this is the issue once again with in a way, with why Marvel does things better, right? Mm-hmm. Because if Marvel was doing this, presumably there would have been a Harley Quinn movie, there would have been a Deadshot movie where mm-hmm. you can fully develop their backstories, where you yeah. can fully develop to people who... Harley Quinn, I think, is an incredibly iconic character mm-hmm. who everybody knows visually and almost nobody knows substantially. Nobody yeah. knows her background. So you have to develop who she is. To mm-hmm. people, she's just the Joker's girlfriend. They don't understand. Like, Dana thought it was very interesting... The, the bit that they show Dr. Harley Quinzel yeah. and her becoming twisted by the Joker. She didn't know that. People mm-hmm. don't know that backstory. But there's not enough time for it to breathe. Mm-hmm. But you also need to show her backstory, which means you have to have the Joker. And if you have the Joker, can you really just have him in that one scene? Yeah. It's a tough one. But he is underused. Mm-hmm. While th- we're talking about him, what did you think? I think him? he's fine. I don't, exactly. I'm he's not, not great. He's not bad. I'm not overly impressed by him. Like He feels like a modern day like crime boss version of the joker as opposed to you know nolan was like you know he's this insane anarchist or he is like what a modern version of what the joker was originally intended to be in the comics Mm -hmm. which is fine yeah i think i i totally respect the decision to not just do yeah dark knight joker again and i thought that he he's interesting enough that i'm looking forward to seeing a mm-hmm. more fleshed out version of him in the solo batman movie or whatever mm-hmm. but there's not enough here to really judge it one way or another i well, don't think you know he's already come out saying you know oh there's more to be shot so much more oh, yeah. yada, yada, yada. he made some comment like i guess the good thing would be if i die they'll release everything and that's I'd what they do be interested to see all of that because based on what we saw all those reports of how he treated everybody and his method of acting was like well it's got to kind of suck for him right yeah like he, he spent the last year and a half or longer with everybody critiquing his performance before they saw it critiquing mm-hmm. the look of the J- joker that was all the talk of this movie for months yeah it got really dark it did um we're talking about the joker so it got dark um uh but talking about it for months for him to be in the movie for i think they said less than 15 minutes of yeah like it's time. not much yeah should i hit the light yeah go ahead. i'm gonna hit the light There we go. I'm back. Um, all right. So I thought he was, I thought he was fine, but nothing special. Yeah. But what were your other issues with the movie before we talk about some of the good things? Um, big one I have is the beginning. I think the very the clear beginning of this movie is when she walks in. Was when Waller is first introduced and she walks in with the book. Okay. The, sure. All the all the dead shot Harley Quinn stuff in the beginning is I think pointless or could have been better served. <laughs> elsewhere in the movie like it just feels out of place where it's like they it's like here's dead shot oh, them in the jail here's harley quinn right and then you you get introduced to them and then she reintroduces you to them a second time like i don't think there's any need for that like it feels and again i don't want to keep harping on this but it feels like they went they had this movie and they had this intro and people were like we want to see where's will smith we want to see will smith where's where's honestly, harley quinn we got to see harley quinn think first that could be a hollywood thing where yeah like, it's in will smith's kind of like I'll be in this ensemble movie. I'll let other people steal the show, but I'm going to be the first person you see in this movie. Honestly. To me, it felt that more... That type of shit happens. But then why would you put Harley Quinn 
there too. Like, it just feels out of place. Maybe it would have felt more out of place if you didn't see others. I don't know. Like, I, I feel like... I really like Ike start. Barinholtz, but he wasn't great. Hmm. He wasn't funny enough as the guard. Yeah. Um. And that character... Deadshot kept saying, I'm going to come and get you. I'm going to kill you. I kept waiting the, for... The, and then Harley was like, you're in trouble. And then the Joker, like, gets him to do something. And kept waiting for him to, like, get his comeuppance. Nothing. It never happened. Like, Nothing. there's no payoff on a lot of stuff. There's no payoff on most of this. And movie. maybe there is. Maybe that's something they yeah. shot. And then it's just... And then the music. I... I, I, I liked this. But I there's just like so the much of it. Like, it feels... It, it feels way too much. It feels... Like I said in this spoiler-free stuff of, like... You know how you liked the awesome mix in Guardians? Well, like, here's even more music, and we're just going to... Here's 10 seconds of this song, and this song, and this song, and this song. And I'm like, I don't need every single character to have its own music. And then Eminem thrown in there, and then this thing thrown in there. And then, like, it just didn't... It didn't flow. I I know, I know, like but it, I still didn't mind it. If you were to look at each scene as, as a separate thing and be like, with the music over, it's like, okay, like, it works fine. But to put them all... Back to back to back to back to back to back. Yeah, I don't it, think it, it works. It was a misunderstanding of why it works in Guardians because mm-hmm. it is used in the right ways in each spot. Yep. But I just, I don't know. I just enjoyed it. I just, I think what I enjoyed was that so much of this from the color palette to the neon lights to the music to the characters, it felt energetic. It felt fun. It felt lively like these other two movies in this friggin' universe hadn't. And I, it felt like a comic book to me. Mm. It really did. Um, it felt like the music did reflect the personality of what the characters were and the personality of the scenes, even though it doesn't work as effectively at all, almost in any case, mm. as the other one. It felt like catchy music for for the sake of just having it. Yeah. And the amount of money some of those songs must have cost to put in this movie is, I mean... The Rolling Stones, Bohemian Rhapsody, yeah, not cheap things to get. Um, was it worth it? I don't, I don't, I don't think so. Oh, no, but it, I didn't mind it. Um, and the like. What did you think of? So we had kind of been speculating for a while because they had not been showing anything of a villain in this mm-hmm. movie that perhaps the Enchantress was the villain because mm-hmm. we were seeing so little, and it turns out that's what she was. Yeah. What did you think of her? So it's, she's just a very generic villain. I wanted to. St- oh, I'm gonna build my machine to destroy the world. What are you, machine? What are you talking about? Like she just kind of come out of nowhere and oh, my brother's out and help me build this and I'm gonna blow up the world. Okay, and then she just kind of like sits the on it. The motivations are, I guess it's because of that one part where she's like, they used to worship us, and now they worship machines, so we're going to... I rag. guess. Like, there's not a clear intention of why she's doing what she's doing, because if they always were trying to, cha- like, destroy the world, then why didn't they just do it 6,000 years ago? Like yeah, but it, it feels but like every other... I at least appreciate it. I actually kind of believed in some way that flag and her actually had the romance that she was kind of this tragic character because she yeah. was a human so at least there's like kind of a, it's not developed enough but a layer of interest whereas some of the more one note mcu villains don't mm-hmm. have anything sure like malekith the accuser you know whatever the mm-hmm. hell um there's there's a lot it of it i feel in this movie where it's like you get they almost get there they're so close on a lot of things and it's just never taken far enough you almost have the right motivations you almost have enough character develop but it just doesn't ever hit those notes and then say... then they go in like when they when they first see like her mutated soldiers which are just kind of boring bland things yeah, just thing. and she's like well, you can't kill them with headshots you can't kill them there's no you know it's impossible and then they just mow not sure it's wrong i guess but like, where are you? Then why would you? Oh, you can't. You, we can't kill them. We can't take them down. Oh, we took them down. Yeah, I mean, I don't. Know. I don't know. But um, some things do work. Yeah. In my, I really liked some of the squad. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that Will Smith was was very entertaining. Yeah, this is this is the most I've liked him in a, like almost a decade. 
Yeah, it's kind of the second movie in a row that I felt Will Smith was Will Smith. I didn't see Concussion, but I really enjoyed Focus. I didn't see Focus. Um, I thought that he was, that was the first time in a long time where I was like, Dan, there's the charismatic movie lead mm-hmm. that has not done anything enjoyable in, like you said, almost a decade. I think the last thing I saw him in was Winter's Tale as the devil. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see that shit. Um, but I really liked him. I thought that Deadshot has a, a good arc an effective mm-hmm. arc. He's really the th- only one who has like a full, well, no, there's one other character that I did really like that okay. I didn't expect to Diablo. Yeah. I thought that he has, he actually has a full fledged minus arc. the really, really shitty effects. Oh yeah. Like that was, those look bad. I was shocked at the, how like, bad that the, just looked. the like Dan and like the little crown above his head. Yeah. Where he walks like out into the prison yard and I'm like, this looks like it was done by like, film students like, yeah no that's bad. but i liked his character yeah i did like his character but i don't think at the i don't think they're all together enough for him to have earned this is my family oh no <clears throat> no way like that i'm just like what are you but, talking about you guys you know you've hung out with these people for four that, hours that felt that felt like throwaway line yeah. i believe that he he because of his like anti-violence choosing mm-hmm. not to do it i believe that he would step up mm-hmm. and fight that thing and even kill himself but to say that this is i'm not going to lose another family that was unbelievable but mm-hmm. i did like his arc i really i actually really like the scene in the bar with all of them i yeah. wish there had been a couple other scenes like that mm-hmm. um i feel like that and, there's probably if pacing was a reason that cut a lot of the stuff down i feel like scenes like that maybe would have it's hard to imagine where else another one like that could even fit yeah. But I liked that one. I mm-hmm. thought it was good. Um, and I really liked... I thought Margot Robbie did a really good job mm-hmm. as Harley Quinn. I feel like she could have been used a little bit better. Like, I feel like a lot of her lines are very just quips and one-liners. Like, mm-hmm. there's not a lot of stuff coming from her there. But I really liked her. My only kind of issue with her performance is I feel like her accent went in and out a lot. There was definitely one specific part where she sounded Australian, mm-hmm. and then um, she had she like is, but... the the you know the typical Harley Quinn accent, and then in like the trailer scenes, like she has like no accent whatsoever. Yeah, but see, part of my understanding of the character mm-hmm. is we are so familiar with her voice, really only from the Arkham games and the animated series, because yeah. that's all that she'd ever appeared in. But when I think of Harley Quinn and I think of, I never imagined that Dr. Harley Quinzel mm-hmm. talked like Harley Quinn. I always mm-hmm. imagined that that was part of her performance mm-hmm. Okay. as as a clown, as the Joker's yeah, girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. And so maybe it would be something that does go in and out. I'm not saying that that's what Robbie's, sure. I think that Robbie was trying to go for it the entire time. But in my head, I've always imagined when I read her in comics mm-hmm. that that is part of the performance, sure. part of her shtick that she's put in and all mm-hmm. that stuff. Um, so, you know what I mean? Yeah. But she was good. Yeah. Uh, definitely, you know, if they were to make that solo Harley Quinn movie, I'm on board. I'm, I'm interested. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, do you want to see a Suicide Squad too? I want to see it more than in Justice League. I'll tell you that. I do, but I, w- but I want them to give whoever... If they give it back to David Ayer, I want them to just let him do his thing. See, I feel like they did let him do his thing. I, he's coming out with all these comments. This is my cut. This is my movie. This is what I set out to well, yeah, make. I take the responsibility. You have to say... How can you... Come out and go well. Basically. I think the mis- no, you don't because other filmmakers recently have not done. Yeah, that. but look at what happened with Fantastic Four, and he's like, "This isn't my movie," and then they fired him from Star Wars. I refuse to believe. Now I think they fired him from Star Wars for the act, actions of him on set. I believe those stories that he was awful. Oh, see, I haven't. That read... he was terrible to people. That he didn't know what he was doing. That he didn't know what he wanted. That scenes took forever. Uh, see, I didn't. Did I haven't read any of those stories. I believe those 100%. I believe he was off that movie well before. And out of a courtesy to Fox, they waited mm. to not make the buzz any bad, worse than it was. But um, as for Air, I believe that he made the movie that he set out to make. I think that where he was screwed 
and where DC screwed him was apparently he had six weeks to write this movie. Yeah. They hired him and they said, you have six weeks and you got to start shooting because we need this out in 2016. Which is the... And so if they... I mean, how do you write... I know, that's... Like this? You can't do that's that. That's why there's... You go, all right, well, I'm going to... I'm going to have the Joker. You want the Joker? I'm going to write all these Joker things. Oh, wait, none of this actually fits because I didn't get to do a second draft, so we had to cut it. Yeah. That's why that stuff happens. Mm. So if they got to stop given, rushing this stuff. If he is given another one, and I think I'd be okay with that mm. because I don't really know who else I'd want to do it other than somebody like James Gunn or something, yeah. which wouldn't ever happen, um, I would just hope that they give God, him the proper awesome. amount of time. I mean, it would be great. You think of what some people like him could do with characters that are this interesting. Mm-hmm. And that's the, some of these characters are underused in it, but Killer Croc could be more interesting. Mm-hmm. Enchantress could be more interesting. Yeah. Katana could be a character. Um, but one of the biggest criticisms of the MCU, with the exception of like three out of their 14 movies, is they don't have interesting villains in the sure. movies. And DC just went and made their best movie of this current cinematic universe filled with villains. Mm-hmm. It just shows that they don't have that issue if they do it the right way. And then you hear about Justice League, and it sounds like we're getting an uninteresting villain. We'll see how it plays out. But, yeah. I mean, Steppenwolf? Come on. You know, that just sounds like a throwaway big powerful thing that they all have to fight yeah we'll see i'm not pre-criticizing sure. it but they have all these awesome villains why don't they use them yeah they did to make this movie but <laughs> any other thoughts on it what did you think of some of the cameos and we should talk about the the stinger too um so you, get, you get a couple scenes with batman and yeah we got our first actual look of the flash in costume which felt really wasted it feels wasted i like seeing him in costume. i I, the more and more i see of like ezra miller scenes i'm really excited to see him as the flash but that this him being there in that suit really confuses me as to where this is supposed to fit in in the timeline because i don't didn't think he was supposed to really have any of that until later um it's unclear, right, where he gets the suit. Because he's just sort of being watched as far as BVS went. And this feels like it's but supposed he, to be between... But I think he already is the Flash, right? Because he is the Flash. Is he, he? But he is the Flash even in BVS when they see the security footage. But he's not... He's just like a... We hom- don't know if he He's a homeless costume, dude. But... It's... I mean, it's unclear. Well, I think that the end credits really clarifies where this movie takes place. Well, yeah. But I'm saying if... If Justice League comes out and it's, you're a part of the team, here's, I'm Bruce Wayne, here's my money, we're going to get you the suit that you need, well, then similar to Spider-Man, confusing. then that screws everything up. Then it, it would definitely be very confusing. I think there's been some rumors about the suit. Well, you have, to also, you have to also think, there's been some rumors that the suit is somehow generated by the power of the electricity. Oh, really? I... But there's also, like, the Flash doesn't get the suit from Bruce Wayne in the comics. For like, sure. I mean, he doesn't get the he makes the suit because it's not like that at all. But like in the comics, he he has people at Star Labs who help him develop yeah. technology and stuff like that. So I don't know where they're gonna go. But I thought that he was it was kind of a waste. It's mm-hmm. it's so quick that it's like <laughs> it's kind of another like blink and you miss it. Yeah. Which, and but the Batman stuff it was, was like a was fine. Look, we're a connected universe kind of thing. Like the Superman stuff at the beginning when they have the T-shirts and the Mm-hmm. Which that felt, the flashback seemed a little out of place, but yeah, I don't, know. I don't know. But the Batman stuff. This is the first time in this universe that we saw Batman and Joker kind of go toe to toe, and I feel like that scene could have been a little bit cooler. Mm-hmm. They don't even show him jump out of the Batmobile. He's just all of a sudden on yeah. the roof. Like you couldn't have done one cool image in that. Like mm. that's kind of underwhelming. And also, while we're talking about the Joker, I did remember specifically thinking. That his entrance, the first frame that we see him, was not interesting enough. First time you see him is when... Is that when they have the gambler in the back room? No, it's before that. It's, it's when she is Dr. Harley Quinzel. Oh, yeah, yeah, But it yeah. just felt like, you know, you think of his first appearance as the Joker in Batman 89. Or mm-hmm. you think of Heath Ledger's when he first walks into the room. It's always iconic, and his was just cut into an interior in a little office yeah. and he's just sitting there mm-hmm. like it should have been 
I feel like they missed something. They missed. A they could have given him a better entrance than that. Yeah. But that could have been something that got cut. Who knows? It could have been. I mean, we don't know. Um, and then the the post credit sequence. It's fine. Yeah. So it it but I don't think it did a good enough job of letting people because I saw this with a group of ten people last night. Okay. And almost everybody walked away going, oh, wow, so the next thing's going to be the Justice League versus the Suicide Squad? And I was like, no, that's not what that was. See, it, it didn't... For us who follow it, it didn't tell us anything new. And for us who... For people who hadn't seen it are just kind of left confused. Like, you know, you leave a Marvel movie and you see this really cryptic shot you of the... You almost tw- never understand it either. I, well, I know, yeah. but like... But it's always like a really interesting thing where you don't quite understand it, but the like the super like in the know people will realize, oh man, this is gonna be a callback. I didn't know that was something that might be coming. Whereas this was like Yep, yeah, we've already seen the Justice she's League footage. The file, yeah, she's giving in the we files of the meta human so he knows where to actually find them. Yep. Okay. So cool. I guess that's how he finds out well, how then to they find do, him. But they do I have never the was wondering how he was going to find out how to no. find him because Bruce Wayne's supposed to be the greatest detective. Yeah. They did have the the one thing that it did do, it had the good moment between him and her where she's like, you should stop working at nights. Like, I know you're Batman. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I thought she was good. But that I was the one Walmart. thing that, that we haven't talked about. I thought Viola Davis was awesome in this. Yeah. Yeah, she was good. I'm excited to see more of her. Mm-hmm. Um and she will presumably pop up in these other movies. Yeah. I think she signed like an eight picture deal or something like wow. that. So I was really confused when it looked like they might kill her off for <laughs> half a second. I was like, mm-hmm. but I liked how even like they acknowledged that, like Will Smith going like, how the hell are you not dead? <laughs> like he was good in this. He was really, yeah. he was, he was good. And I'm excited to see more of them. I just don't know when we're going to get more of these people. Yeah. This movie is we're f- recording this on a Saturday morning. It is charting to be a massive hit. I think mm-hmm. it's. It was like, presumed that it would open between like one fifteen and one forty, and it's on pace for one forty now. So the high end of expectations, okay. which beats the August record by like sixty million. Mm-hmm. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Um. So DC is gonna want to make another one of these, but I'm surprised that we just hadn't already heard about it. You know. Just Probably because they're waiting to see. The hell are they waiting for? They before they even knew what reception to VVS was, they let j- him make a Justice League movie after making a bad Man of Steel movie. Yeah. And I know that they might have regretted that, but you don't have to say David Ayer is making Suicide sure. Squad two. I just can't believe that we didn't already get the confirmation of a Suicide Squad two. Maybe they maybe they're gun shine. Maybe they're like, well, we announced all this stuff, and look how it's blown up in our face. So maybe we need to just take a step back. They might have, and I think that just further shows how incompetent things are. It's a over mess. There. But hopefully, Jeff Johns is correcting that course because we have to remember. Yes, that happened in between BVS and Suicide Squad. Mm. Suicide Squad was already made. Yeah, he had nothing to do with this movie. Do you want to save some of this for our yeah, discussion? Yeah, let's, let's save yeah. some of that. So we're going to talk more about the DC Cinematic Universe um, um, this later, week yeah, in our discussion. Um, but yeah, so overall, you liked it. I thought it was meh. Um, have you guys seen it? What did you think of it? Go ahead and let us know in the comments below or tweet at us. I'm on Twitter at Rich Belson. I'm at Stonks. The channel's on Twitter at OABeer underscore official. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash over a beer. Instagram is over underscore A underscore beer. And of course, right here at youtube.com slash over a beer. Um, that'll wrap things up for this over beer movie review. So until next time, drink up and butter me up.